is that electromagnetism is the two fundamental forces that are important and also the the, the dominant forces that are that, that that has a variety or a vast range of application in natural and technological phenomena so now currently with the knowledge of electromagnetism you will be able to know how the art is being made how the natural art how even the living organisms is being made and how these forces are contribute in maintaining sustainability as well as the biochemical and biological reactions that are taking place in the living system and also in terms of technological advancement in terms of technological advancement the 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 the, the computer system we are using the phone we are using the the, the the radio stations the tv stations and so many things are actually due to influence of this two fundamental forces which is electricity and magnetism and the electromagnetism is solely responsible for the structure of matter yeah of course because when we said electromagnetism we are talking about uh we are talking about actually forces and this force we usually look at them from the point of electron the neutron as well as the, the protons so these electrical forces are responsible for the structure of matter, both organic and inorganic. And of course, we can't say anything. We, we can't, if we said a matter, it means anything. Anything we know on, on earth is matter. So that is why physics, chemistry, biology, and material sciences are all rely on these two forces, that is electricity and magnetism and they are responsible because of course we have different state of matter we have solid liquid gas and we have the plasma so why do we have this different state of matter it's actually due to, the, due to the differences in electromagnetic forces so electromagnetic forces make one object unique from one another it's like in a normal living system is the dna we have that is responsible for the signature of our lives. And so also when it comes to issue of matter, both organic and inorganic objects, it is the, the signature of electromagnetic forces is what make them differ from one another. And of course, if you look at physics, we're talking about the matter here that we are talking about, the matter, but in relation to energy in relation to energy and when we said chemistry it means the structure the composition and the properties of matter and of course when we said biology it means living matter living matter and of course when we said material sciences it's just talking about the matter is and how it's being made so that is why the operation of most technological devices is based on the electromagnetic forces. So with what I want you to understand, you can understand the concept of physics, chemistry, biology, material sciences without understanding the concept of electromagnetic forces. So it is very, very important. And also the operation of most technological devices is based on these electromagnetic forces starting from light the motors and the battery the communication and broadcasting system as well as micro electronic devices they are all dependent on these electromagnetic forces and of course engineering you can't do engineering without you can't do engineering without understanding the concept of electromagnetic forces so that is why it is very very important don't actually think okay I'm a medical student. Why do I need physics one two two? In fact, there are some of the machines that are operating only with application of this electromagnetic forces. And we'll talk about them. Okay. Like for example, when we are talking about electromagnetic forces, uh, electromagnetism is actually we look at it from the point of key perspective one 
electromagnetism is talking about the electricity the magnetism as well as the optics and of course we know that currently there are machines that there are machines that are that they are only that we are operating them with an application of optics which is wave physics like for example radiography 90 percent of radiography is all about the optics physics 90 percent of radiography you know that when we talk about radiography we are talking about how you can use light to get an image of a particular individual so that at least you can use that application as a diagnosis like remember in x-ray when you use x-ray it's, it's it's an application of octaves where you can get the image of an internal organ so optics is very very important and also the magnetism because when we are talking about magnetism and electricity it's all about electrons so it is very very important to understand the concept of electromagnetism so understanding there because look at it in this first field we have, of course, the properties of lights, the properties of lights, which is under this optics, we have reflection, we have refraction, we have image interference, and of course, the fraction. So the optics waves or the optics physics is using the application of this reflection, refraction, image, interference, and the fraction to generate, to generate to generate an image or something that will that, that is meaningful so once you master this basic concept of electromagnetism you will be ready to move forward into more advanced subject in your specific field of interest and that is the reason why you are doing these courses especially this physics you're doing electricity magnetism and some of you are doing optics physics so you do it because once you understand them very well, then you can move to any field of study. And of course, you can beat your chest. Because one thing that you don't understand is like if you are doing biochemistry, biochemistry is just trying to give you a general knowledge of how you can interpret life. And so also physics, chemistry, biology is also trying to give you a basic and the fundamental understanding of how life come into ethics and how it operates so you can use the concept of life to be able so you can use the concept of basic sciences to explain a lot of things so that is why it is very very important if you want to be a very good doctor understand physics understand chemistry and biology okay So the next thing that we are going to look at is actually a system of units. So we'll use the SI system, which is SI stand for International System of Unit. And of course, in physics, you can't do physics without understanding, without knowing the fundamental quantities. And the basic fundamental quantities we have, we have length. And the SI unit of length is meter, which is abbreviated as M. And of course, mass, which is kilogram, and we have time, which is in second. So when you said fundamental unit, it means that there are the units that they depend on their on their independent quantities, and you can't change them. Whenever you see length, then you change it. You must change it to meter. And when you see mass, you have to change it to kilogram. And once you have time, you must change it to second. So these are the units that you have to always try to work with them. And of course, ampere, which is current, is also another fundamental unit. And then the next thing is we have drive units. So when you say drive units, drive units is a unit that actually obtain from different fundamental quantities. Like for example, if you want to look at it starting from force, what is the formula for force? Force is equal to mass times acceleration so if you look at it from the force it's equal to mass times acceleration so you see the mass here is a fundamental unit 
as we have here and then we have acceleration acceleration is also a drive unit because it's made of of different uh fundamental quantities so you can also break it down because when you have acceleration it's equal to velocity all over time so the time here is also a fundamental unit and then the next thing is also uh the velocity is a drive unit so you have to break it which is distance all over time so you see if you look at the force it's made of, of so many fundamental units so that is why they are called drive unit because of the we obtain them from different uh fundamental units so that is where they are drive they are obtained from fundamental quantities okay so the next thing that we are going to look at is electrostatic so you said electrostatic electrostatic it means it's a study of charge at rest study of charge study of charge at rest is the study of charge at rest because electro means charge static means something at rest so electrostatic is the study of charges at rest and it was first discovered by a greek around 600 bc so this electrostatic is been discovered around 600 bc that is before christ by greeks that is fundamental unit and uh, how did he discover this electrostatic he did that by rubbing an amber with silk when he rubbed an amber with silk to understand that electrons are uh, flow from one to the other so they discovered that when he rubbed this amber with silk the amber will attract a small object like pieces of paper and this means that the amber is being electrified electrified so first he has an amber so when he rubbed this amber with silk what happened next the amber is now become charged and as a result of that the amber was able to be attract or to start attracting small objects like papers so that is how this greeks was able to come up with an idea of electrostatic first he has an amber and silk and the amber is neutral so when he rubbed the amber with silk then he now the scientist was now able to understand that okay an electron is flowing from the silk to the amber and then the amber is now become charged as a result of that charged good by the amber the amber itself was able to start picking some pieces of paper it's like this is a very uh interesting concept and most of us we are aware of how this happened remember if you are using let's say a magnet and you use a small metal and when you actually rub them together the metal objects maybe let's say star that goes spanner they will get some small amount of charge so once they are charged they will start picking an object so this is how the scientist was able to first come with an idea of electrostatic and the rough two objects then object electrons start flow and as a result of that some become charged okay so the transfer of charge you see here we have silk first and then we have glass rot so some material attract electrons more than others so here we have silk and we have silk and glass rot 
So what happens? So we have glass rod and silk. As the glass rod is rubbed against silk, electrons are full of the glass onto the silk. Okay, so electrons are full of the glass rods onto the silk. So you see the glass rod is now and the silk are now start getting charges. So the, the charge is actually start transferring between one another. So usually matter, we know that when we look at matter, they are generally neutral because the number of electrons and protons are equal. So generally in a matter, if you have a matter, the number of protons and electrons are always the same. The number of protons and electrons are the same. So if the protons and electrons are the same, it means that they are charged. They doesn't have any positive charge or negative charge. But here, the silk has an excess of electrons and the rod is deposit. So since the silk is having an excess electrons, while the glass rod is deficit, and the electrons will start flowing or will start transferring from the silk to the rod. Okay? So you should get this. Because the silk is having excess or sufficient electrons, while the glass rod is having deficient electrons. So the electron will start flowing from silk to the glass rod. So it means that the glass rod will be charged.